going on guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. So we're back again on the new extra cab from RC Four Wheel Drive. It's TF2 long wheelbase. In the unboxing video, I try to decide, you know, what direction do I want to take this? Um, typically, all my builds, if you watch the Scottsdale unboxing on the TF2, we've lowered it down, got it set in a little more scale looking, and uh, did some mods to make it perform a little bit better and just look a little bit more proportionate. This one sets up a little bit high for the size tires. Um, the springs on this are softer. Uh, they come out of the box with a little bit different setup now. So honestly, it really wouldn't take much to get it to set lower, mainly just breaking in the leaf springs. So we're not gonna do that. <laughs> we're gonna do a show truck kind of build. Uh, you know, it, growing up in the 90s, this is the stuff we used to see back in the late 80s, early 90s. I've got some really cool parts mostly for cosmetic but we do have some actual performance parts so we'll talk about what we got and start putting this on i'm still trying to figure out what order to attack this in um got massive tires so these are the rc four wheel drive interco irock 155 scale tire i had these on my first ever blazer build i did years and years ago i don't believe i have these on anything currently looking around the shop i don't believe i do these are a massive tire. Um, you get the tape measure here. These are about four and a quarter outer diameter, so big tire. To mount those, I've got the new RC four wheel drive center lines. And these are center line Scorpion deep dish 155s. Just total period correctness. I mean, these, these were all the rage back in the 90s. I don't remember the exact dates, but man, it was, I remember I had a bunch of friends in high school that worked at Discount Tire, and, and if you had some center lines, you were, you were it. You were the cat's meow. So these are newer. These, I think these were around a hundred bucks. Not as expensive as some of the other new wheels they've got, but they've, they've got a few different kind of wheels that are this style, these old 90s style deep dish. And that's, that's kind of the vibe RC4 drives having because the rigs and stuff are 80s, 90s style. So it makes sense to go that route. Then I've got the roll bar, the tube roll bar. This is the double steel tube headache rat for the 87 extra cab and the Mojave 2. So that'll actually work on the regular. Oh, that'll work on the Hilux body too. <laughs> so to go on that, I don't have the part number for these, but I've got a set of the Casey highlights. I bought these to put on the front of my blue blazer. It came with six. So we've got four left and it looks like this has four mounts on top. So that'll be perfect. And I think that's going to look cool because the yellow smiley face covers, the yellow shocks, just a little bit of complimentary colors. Then we've got the double steel tube rear bumper for the 87 extra cab. Again, just a very period correct piece. I believe these are, it has a tube front bumper also. I didn't get that because I kind of like the black grill. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure the, still not sure the direction we're going. We're going to see how this looks and uh, play it by ear. I've also picked up a couple sets of the lift blocks for the Yoda and K20 or K44 axles. Um, these have the pinion correcting one. This is basically what comes on the Scottsdale ready to runs that we took off of mine. Um, I got two sets of those because they're going to come in handy for a future product that I'm making for RC every day and I needed some more to play with and we'll see if we need to lift this truck anymore. Then we got the new Bauhaus NR2 high skid high clearance skid plate. This is the fifth version of this. It's crazy. Um, I've got on old red has the original one before they were even called Bauhaus. Um, it's pretty cool. Have that little piece of, uh, history. They've been around for gosh, a lot of years now. So we've got that and the coupling. This is the carrier bearing for the long wheel base. So typically when you would raise your transfer case on these, you would have to just run a longer drive shaft in the back because the carrier bearing is still low and that's a solid shaft out of the uh, transfer case so now they've got a bracket to compensate for that as well um, i've never actually had one of these i didn't even know they made them so i'm excited to see how that works out and uh i think that's about it let's uh figure out where we're gonna start all right so i started with the tires and wheels um they're massive oh man so we're definitely gonna have to lift it just a little bit uh the front just to clear the steering and everything so the lift blocks definitely did Good purchase. Uh, one thing, the rear, I can't move it right now because it's all just sitting, but I've got it kind of 
propped up where it's not drooping at all. And the rear is sitting a little far forward in the axle or in the wheel housing. So if you watched the last video about the green blazer, I've got some leaf springs that are a little bit longer. May have to do that if we're going to actually lift this thing and go a little bit bigger. It sounds weird coming out of my mouth, but uh, yeah, these things are just massive compared to the stock tires. So a little bit of lift block. We'll play with that. I need to also, before we get too far, I'm going to go ahead and build the other two tire and wheel. And then we're going to look at the Bauhaus skid plate and moving all that because I don't want to, we're, we're going to move transfer case up, axles down. I don't want to get too far and overextend our drive shafts. So lots of little things to consider, just kind of the doing it the opposite way that we normally do. All right, guys, got all the tires and wheels mounted up. I'm really happy with how those beadlocks went together. Um, noticed that a lot lately. A lot of the newer wheels, they're not as big a pain in the butt as they used to be. The way it's designed, um, we got a pretty simple setup, just five screws, and you don't have to have longer screws to get one started and then try to force the other ones on. So, yeah, they've been improving their designs as far as beadlocks go for a while now. Um, you can see here how far forward that rear tire sits. And yeah, the, when we had it on the small tires, when we squat it down, it's pretty well centered. So, <laughs> I don't mean to seem ungrateful, but they're doing things to fix all the issues that we've been fixing in the videos when we get a new TF2. They've made it to where the tires are centered as it sits lower. And of course, now that they're doing that, we're going to do the opposite and try to lift it. <laughs> it's funny how that stuff goes, but the front looks A-OK. -okay. Like This has the uh, front shackle reversal kit, so it's proper Toyota uh, hanger in the front, shackle in the back, and that is looking just fine. So I think we're going to run some longer leaves on the back. I've already picked some out. It's actually some that I took off of the blazer a couple videos ago, and that should get us pretty well centered. And we're going to put the lift blocks in. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take the body off, and we're going to look at this Bauhaus uh, transfer case mount and all of that. There's going to be a little bit of disassembly involved with that to uh, get that stock one out because of the way it attaches. Uh, it's just how these are. Um, I just set the roll bar up there for right now to get that big old bag off of the table. And it just looks cool. So we'll get to that later in the video. I did want to mention if you get these centerline wheels, be very careful with these are Phillips head screws, just like the real wheel has for the center cap. And they are super tiny. Um, I got out my old computer repair stuff and found a nice little tiny bit. I think I have these in the Amazon store. It's really good quality stuff if you need a lot of oddball size things. But... Yeah, tiny, tiny little screws. I've got the uh, <laughs> muffin pan out to keep all this stuff organized and uh, try not to lose any of those little guys. All right, well, great news. Um, outdated information I have. <laughs> so I'm used to these, the Trail Finder 2 regular wheelbase. The uh, body mount is on this, so you have a screw that goes to the inside. It's a complete pain in the butt to try and take it out and... Uh, yeah, because you got to take the transfer case out, and you got to try to get a screw out from the inside. Uh, now, this one being the long wheel base, the mounts are further apart, so we got good access to all of those screws. It's going to be no issue at all. Um, yeah, <laughs> worked out really well. I was not looking forward to that. Hoping we can leave the front stuff all assembled. Oh, there's not a bit of Loctite on that. Before you guys go crawl your new RTRs, go ahead and run through some of the stuff with the. Uh, with Loctite. <laughs> that was, I probably could have pulled that out with my finger. All right, I'm gonna pull this transfer case bolts out and we will get the Bauhaus kit ready. It should, shouldn't fall through because we're attached with that solid shaft out of the transmission. All right, so this is going to get us, there's a good way to look at it. That's gonna get us so, uh, almost half an inch, quarter inch, somewhere in that range of more ground clearance. That'll be a nice improvement. Let me get this shaft off of here. There we go. Pull this carrier bearing out. And we should be able to leave that shaft attached to it. And grab that other piece. This is the into our coupling bracket for the TF2 long wheelbase. Like I said, I didn't even know they made this. I've been working with Bauhaus for a long time and I haven't really had to replace any of this stuff, so I haven't seen what they've got new. Come on. I'm gonna get that ball bearing out of there. This should slide in 
one side or the other. Uh, did I put it on the wrong side? Maybe it takes a different size bearing. I don't know. I'll have to see. All right, so it is supposed to fit a larger bearing, and I have one here out of an older version of this. Um, I guess RC4 drive has since downsized. That's even different altogether. Huh. So I've got a drawer full of these, or I've removed them over rigs in the years. Um, as with a lot of things like my kits, 3D printed stuff, you got to press in some bearings. It's the best way to do it. Some nice pliers. Boom. All right. Back on track. Man, I'm glad I found that because I can't find my box of bearings anymore. <laughs> so this looks like it actually mounts into the four link mounts. And you get the three link, four link conversion. It has these recesses in the chassis where brackets mount and uh, allow provisions for that, which is kind of cool. And make sure our motor wires aren't going to be in the way. This is a snug fit. I hope we don't have to file any. I'm afraid we might. Looks like our motor wires will be fine underneath it. Get it back up here again. Drive shaft came apart. I like that it's even got little fake bolts on it. <laughs> it's gonna look nice. It's very nice. All right, let's try this side. All right, let me do a little bit of filing on this to get it in. All right. I'm not sure if you can hear all the background noise. There's a lot of stuff going on outside. I uh, live out in the boonies, and we're getting fiber internet finally. And they're drilling and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And every vehicle that's driven by has a trailer making a bunch of noise. So I really don't know where all my ball bearings went. I found two small packages, but none of which were the massive sur surplus I have of them. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Get that servo wire down. All right, we're at golden now. Got to find a couple extra screws for that. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and slide this in and see. That's not going to thread into there, so we're going to have to put nuts on the inside of it as well. All right, finally making some progress. A little bit of work to get these started in the 3D print. <laughs> they were all going smooth until I turned the camera back on. <laughs> That's how it always goes. I got a little bit shorter screw for these back ones since they're uh, that part of the chassis is a little bit thinner. There we go. Would have liked to have done a coarse thread, but... I don't have enough spares of those. They come in handy with a lot of other things. That's snugged up and then we'll move around to the top. Nice. All right, I did put some Loctite on that drive shaft as well to uh, keep that thing in place. All right, last one. Just putting some nylon uh, lock nuts on the inside. We got plenty of space in there and doesn't interfere with our wiring at all. Um, if you notice, I moved the battery tray back on this truck. <clears throat> I started filming some stuff and I decided to wait for all these parts to come in. Um, I was having issues with my battery. I don't have a whole lot of them with the XT60s yet and the one I'm running was a little bit big so I needed to move this back so it's a little more underneath the extra cab part and it helped out quite a bit. Just put one battery strap on because it's pretty well wedged in there. Um, still taking this body on and off with these inner fenders is a little tight. It takes a little, little wrestling with it but got that all in. It looks much much better there and uh don't have any issues with our drive shafts yet <laughs> until we throw in the lift blocks so let me clean up some of this mess and uh yeah that looks good let's even got little scale bolts on it as well adds this little detail underneath all right got the front end blown apart i'm hoping we don't run into a problem with our shocks being too short that is uh, a possibility right now so i've got one side here loosened up Got the tallest of the lift blocks in. Those are, I don't know how big. It's on my caliper. I don't know where it is. They're that big. <laughs> it's uh, hopefully uh, just enough. I don't want to stack blocks. I don't be that guy. All right, got one of those loose. Should be able to use the same screws. 
go ahead and it didn't uh, quite go as planned because uh, we have the front hanger and the reversal kit on here. So usually I'd undo the back, flip the axle completely over, and uh, yeah, can't do that on these Toyota Life. So we're just going to do it this way. It's a little harder to show you, but get that one started back and we'll pull the next one out. Flip it around. If it'll flip around. May not flip around. There we go. We got room. Play nice, come on. There we go. All right. Don't wanna to do too much lift, but we need a little bit more with those big old tires. Oh, I'm gonna cheat. Not gonna add any other leaf springs. Uh, I don't wanna make it any stiffer. We're not really gonna get more lift that way, I don't believe. So yeah, I'm gonna do the other side. And we'll put in the front back up. The back's going to be a little bit more involved because we're going to be swapping out the entire leaf. Oh, I was afraid it was going to be that way. The shocks are a little too short now. Uh, they are fully extended and we're about a oh, quarter inch too low. So the only ones I have are these. And I have no idea where these came from, but they have the boots on them. It's going to clash with our color scheme, but I think these are going to work. These are, these are probably 100s. I can't tell for sure. <laughs> I gotta figure out which way the boot's supposed to go. I can't remember if it's up or down on these, what the style was. I think it's down, but I don't know. Let me double check, throw this front end back together. All right, guys, I don't know what's going on today. I'm just having a, having a rough time. I feel like this video is not turning out very good, but we'll see in editing. So I got the front end back together. Um, I did add a little spacer here for the uh, servo drag link, just to raise it up a little bit since the axle and everything is up a little bit. Um, it does put our rear bar a little close to the leaf spring. I'm not worried about it because, like I said, this is just trying something out. I'm not sure yet. I, this has been a colossal pain in the butt so far. Um, don't have the right size shocks. I don't. I really wanted to keep the yellow to complement the the KC lights, but it is what it is. We got rolled to punches. I've got the front wheels and tires on those center cap screws. Oh my goodness! Even with a, a proper size thing it is tedious and uh yeah definitely use caution with these wheels they are uh, one time install maybe <laughs> we'll see so now we gotta move on to the back everything in front's jiving good jiving good enough uh, we've lost a little up travel but we've got these massive tires so i think it's gonna balance out now on the back i didn't bring my leaf springs in here that i've got we're gonna put some longer leaf springs on it because like you saw at the beginning of the video they are it, the axles just too far forward all right Got all the leaf bolts out. I'm gonna pull the whole thing off on this one instead of just flipping it forward. And we're gonna move this out the way and work on it here. And of course, there went the washers, the spacers for the shocks. Uh, we try to keep those on there, but it never works out. So you can see here, even match the arch, this leaf spring is still a little bit longer. Um, these two are a good match pair. So we need the lift and the length. So I think these are our best bet. I'm going to go with less is more. Um, I've got some that are drastically longer, but I'm afraid that's going to be too much. Let me grab a couple more and we'll take a look. I give up trying to make sense of the leaf spring situation. So these just came off a brand new RTR truck. These are the RC4 drive red soft springs. So if we arch those, line up the holes, we're about eighth of an inch longer on each side. <laughs> so... I don't know what to tell you. This one's a little bit longer than that. I think that's that's our safe bet. So I'm going to throw <laughs> these on. I'm going to leave the secondary leaf on, and we're going to use these, uh, the tallest lift blocks that come in this kit. Try not to cut the silica pack open. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, so the leaf spring wheelbase change, perfect. Perfect on the money. Fix that issue. Um, but we're sitting lower in the back. <laughs> Notice I haven't put the center caps on the rear yet because I think I'm going to have to get back in there. And, um, the th most surprising part of this, we still have about as much flex as we started with. And I'm not going to be mad at that at all, but we've got to get this back end up a little bit. So I used the straight sided lift blocks. 
you remember on the Scottsdale the unboxing we did, they had some angled ones for the rear because it lifted so much that it needed to adjust the pinion angle up a little bit. So, as much as I don't want to be that guy, I may have to add another set of lift blocks in the back um, just because we probably should use some of these offset ones and it'll go in that way and that can give our axle a little bit more tilt up so that drive shaft doesn't get in too weird of an angle but i'm really happy to see all of our drive shaft angles and stuff are not that much worse over stock you don't really want to use the angled blocks on the front and start tilting the front axle that way then your steering is not going side to side it's going digging in and when you're crawling and stuff it's a horrible idea so again this is going to be more of a show truck so take that into consideration not putting more lift blocks on the front i'm going to leave that how it is our steering is working just fine the way it is so got to do something to get the back end up i guess we're going to do more blocks i could throw another leaf spring in it but i don't want to do that because like i said we've got the same amount of flex that we had to start with so the wheelbase is good we just need a little bit more height. Oh, let's go with a lift block. <laughs> oh, who am I? Just wanted to show you how tedious these little screws are. It's even harder with the camera in your face. Um, magnetize the tool. Trying not to scratch the pretty wheel. Am I even... There it is. Oh. Phillips head. <laughs> Not fun. Just barely snug. All right, guys, this is taking me way longer than I thought it would. So I think the rest of the scale stuff, the roll bar, the bumper, and uh, lights and things are going to have to wait until the next video. I am whooped for today. We've got it setting pretty level. It's still just down a little bit in the back, but I think once we address the shock situation, um, yeah, we can sort that out. So... I, I'm kind of digging it, and I'm, I'm really surprised that we still have as much flex as we do. It is still working as good as it did before. We just got 37s on it or something. Um, it looks fantastic. I'm digging it. I don't know about the red shock caps and things, but we'll have to do some more research. See if I can find some old show truck footage and videos or pictures from the, back in the day. And uh, see what what there was out there like this. There had to be some rig that was a white extra cab that was done up back in the day. But um, I did the pinion angle and stuff in the back looks a little bit better on um, the shocks. So I moved the top mounts out as far as they'll go and going straight down, we're still hitting the shocks straight on the leaf spring. So we do have side to side. The same thing, basically just the opposite that we were having with the blazer a couple videos ago. We went low and the shocks were hitting we had to find the right balance of where to mount them problem is with the extra space here below the leaf spring we've just kind of shoehorned ourselves into a mess so the solution i think is going to be running a shorter shock and we just mount it straight to the side of the chassis if you remember the scottsdale comes like that now it doesn't mount to that inner uh, cross brace it actually mounts on the outside of the rail and that gives us Four opportunities to mount shocks. Not saying I want to run four shocks, but two might be cool. And then we could mount them to here on both sides of the axle and just go straight up. Um, it, that in itself will limit articulation, but I don't think it'll be as bad as uh, as what we're having right now. And the front drive shaft did just fall out. So I've got to go through my bin and see if we have a longer center section for that. Um, if not, maybe a longer end or two and uh play with those i've got a bunch of spare stock punisher shafts the plastic ones but you can see here how much ground clearance we've gained over that stock uh, transfer case mount um sorry that strap's still hanging down in there but that makes a world of difference that is so i'm gonna wrap this video up here appreciate you guys watching uh it's very different for me you know it, it's it's ironic that we had to change the rear leaf springs out to make the wheelbase correct because i, I think rc4 drive has been listening to us and with the Scottsdale and this kit, they've not put the springs in the shocks. They've put less of the leaf springs on the pack. They still come with them. You can install it yourself. But they're doing things, gearing it towards sitting lower, like I typically do in all my videos. 
And then of course I lift this one. So, <laughs> but you know, I just got to mix it up, try something different. Uh, you know, it, you don't always have to stick to the same routine. Um, I, I think this looks cool. It's honestly, it's not going to perform much worse. I mean, right now it is because the shock deal, but the flex we're still getting is the same as it was. We just got to do some playing around with the shocks and drive shafts and stuff, but it's a different look. So to each their own, um, you know, don't knock it till you try it, I guess. I've seen uh, Mike's RC World doing these kind of builds and he's got eight shocks on each axle and just crazy stuff that looks scale. It's another aspect of the scale world. It doesn't have to always be stock scale. It can be old show truck scale or whatever. So anyway, guys, get out there and do something fun with the hobby. Keep it scale and I'll see y'all next time.